How much are closing costs? What do they all mean? Where does the money go? And why are they even there? Hi, this is Clint Stitzer with the Stitzer Real Estate Group. And before we begin, I wanna call your attention to two links on our blog. First, if you're interested in buying or investing in real property, please click on the search now link. If you're interested in selling real property, please click on the property valuation link. Closing costs, cash to close, down payment. How does it all fit together and what does it mean and why is it sometimes so much? Well, let's just put it into three buckets, okay? Your first bucket is your down payment. So let's say you're buying a home for $200,000 and you need to put 20% down, so you have your down payment bucket. Then what we have are, is your one-time closing cost bucket. This is items that are just a cost to close a transaction. Then we have what you call your prepaid bucket. And that's really cost of owning your property into the future. Property taxes, homeowners insurance, HOA dues, things of that nature, they go into your prepaid bucket. Now, when we get a loan, oftentimes those things have to be paid in advance so that when we pay your monthly payments of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, that account of escrow that covers your taxes and insurance in the future is adequately funded. Okay, so those are the three basic buckets that we're gonna look at and take into consideration when we're doing closing costs. So we're just gonna look right at a closing disclosure, which is the new form required by the feds, um, that it goes over the whole thing. So let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, page one of the closing disclosure is very simple. It tells us our loan amount, our interest rate, and our estimated principal and interest portion of the payment. Then it goes into our principal and interest in addition to our estimated escrow. Now you say, what's in our escrow? Well, for this specific file, uh, escrow includes property taxes and homeowners insurance. It does not include HOA dues. So that gave us a total uh, payment of $2,622.91. Now, the next pin, which is the topic of this conversation, are the two items, closing costs and cash to close. So we have closing costs of $8,913 for this file, which includes $4,860 in loan costs, $6,553 in other costs, which we will go over once some are prepaid, some are one time, and then we got a $2,500 lender credit. And this is the point in time where I wanna invite you to think about the different ways that we can pay closing costs. In every real estate contract, we negotiate who pays for what. Sometimes we have the sellers pay for an owner's policy of title insurance and all of the transfer tax. We may be able to get the seller to pay for some of the inspections, depending on what type of home it is and the type of transaction. Oftentimes, that's a buyer's fee. Sometimes, we can ask the seller for a credit to cover all of your recurring and non-recurring closing costs. Another option is you can get a slightly different interest rate, or maybe there are some lenders that are offering incentives to help pay for your closing costs. On this sheet right here, we see a, a lender credit of $2,500. So ask us or ask your realtor when you get into a closing situation, if that's a concern for you, if closing costs are an item where you may not have the cash available, we can pull some different levers and find that money for you, okay? Um, so there's a lot of options, but just know, if you don't have it, there are ways around that situation, okay? So let's look at the way the Fed has asked us to start to explain this. We have loan costs, we have services that you do not shop for as a buyer, and then we have services you do shop for, and all, this, all these services are your, your title fees. So you really choose your title fees or your title insurance company when you write your offer, and that's a negotiation also between the buyer and the seller. Uh, your origination fees for getting your loan is also something you can shop for. You can go online, you can shop for rates, but I always recommend you take into consideration the viability and operations, the dependability of that lender versus just the cost. But again, that's something you talk about upfront with your lender before you write an offer so you really understand how that picture looks for your specific situation. Uh, moving forward, we do have additional one-time costs, including county transfer tax and recording fees. Then we get into our prepaids. And that's where we prepay homeowner's insurance for 12 months. That way if something happens, your policy's already paid. We prepay taxes for a few months. We pay a prorated portion for when you take ownership. In Washoe County, we have an interesting tax schedule where you pay in August, like October, January, March. You don't pay every four months, like January, April, July, September. You, you pay at weird times. So, so we have to really do some 
fun addition to get you the correct amount. That way you never have a shortfall and your bank's not calling you and saying, hey, uh, we're 2,000 bucks short for your taxes, you owe us $2,000. <laughs> we do a lot of that prepaid up front here so that those accounts are adequately funded to avoid surprises. Something to take into consideration for your prepaids is all of these things are calculated to make ownership for you easier and avoid surprises. Sometimes that requires more cash up front and we just work to know that going in, okay? Um, the other thing that we take into consideration are HOA dues and HOA setup fee. We do prepay some HOA dues, uh, pay your HOA setup fee. Oftentimes HOA dues are paid outside of close of escrow. As a percentage, what you'll be surprised to find is oftentimes your prepaids are as big, if not a bigger percentage of your total closing costs as are your one-time closing costs, which means your loan costs and your title costs and your, your other taxes. In this specific instance, our prepaids are totaling uh, 4,430 some odd dollars, Ooh, plus another 400, so about $4,700 of our total $8,900 in closing costs are prepaid, so more than 50%. So that's basically how our closing costs are assembled. We have our down payment, we have our one time, we have our prepaid, oftentimes they're expensive because of the prepaid, not necessarily because of the fees of title and mortgage. Those are both things that you can shop for and both things I highly recommend you look into prior to writing a contract and shopping for a home. And if you have questions about that and how to do that, we're happy to help and give you questions to ask those specific service providers. Uh, moving on in this closing disclosure, there's what we call like a settlement statement, which is the accounting of the transaction. And this is where we as realtors will help you ensure that the terms of the contract are upheld in the accounting of the agreement. So if the seller is gonna be paying for an owner's policy of title insurance, this is where we make sure that the buyer is properly credited and the seller is properly debited that amount such that your cash to close accurately reflects the full agreement. That's all on this page right here. I hope that uh, this video, which breaks it down into again, three buckets of how closing costs are calculated, where those monies go, helps make sense of the situation, Oftentimes these are things that we calculate as we get into a transaction because the timing of the closing changes. But if you're in a situation where you'd like to talk about this in more specific, ask any questions or someone you know has questions or problems, we're more than happy to help. This is Clint with the Stitzer Real Estate Group that's all about closing costs and wish you great success in all your real estate ventures.